Hi everybody, welcome John here. Today's video we are going to be looking at um, HTML tables in Beautiful Soup 4 and how we can access tables that don't have a class or an ID or anything that defines them. Okay, so in front of me I've got our uh, working Pi file which we are importing Beautiful Soup and we are also opening up this HTML file which I have on this side here. Now this HTML file has two tables in it, one which has no class or ID or anything like that and one that has an ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the um, interactive Python interpreter in uh, VS Code. Uh, to do that, I'm going to do Python 3 in my case, but it might just be Python in yours, dash i, and then the name of the file, which is working.py in my case. So what this is going to do is this is going to open this up in an interactive terminal for us to use in VS Code. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how to access each of these tables. Now let's treat this as a small snippet of a larger HTML file, but we've ascertained that there are only two tables. So the easiest way to access the first table will be indexing because it doesn't have a, uh, an, a name or an ID or a class. We can actually just find it by going through how many tables there are and choosing which one it is. So if I say table um, is equal to, and we can do soup dot find all table like this. So what this is going to do, I'll make that one step bigger. There we go. So what this is going to do is this is going to look in our soup variable, which we have as the open HTML file, and it's going to find all of the tables. Now this this file could have hundreds of tables in it potentially, but it's going to find all of them. So if I hit enter and then I click table, we can see that we've got both of them back here. So if we look at this one, we've got a list and we've got table and then this is the first one. And then if I collapse that back down again, somewhere down here, we'll see we have table with a table of ID. So what we've done is we've basically just asked to find every tag, every table tag on this page and bring back that information. But because it returned a list, now find all always returns a list, we can actually just index that. So instead of find all and then table, we can actually just put our brackets here. And because Python is a zero index language, we put zero to find the first one on that list. So what that's going to do is it's going to look through this file. It's going to find all of the tables that it can. And it's only going to give us the first one, the zero index, which is this table here. So I'll expand this a bit. Um, and then I'll type table here so we can see. And we've got exactly this table back. Uh, we can see this data is appearing down here. So what we've done is we've just basically found the first one in the list, which happens to be this one here. Now, even though this one does have an ID, we could actually call this one back by changing our zero to a one. And we can see now we've got everything from this table. However, uh, when you're actually doing web scraping properly, it, it's so much easier just to use the ID. This is for when you don't have that ID. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this to a zero to get the first table again from our list. So how would we go about then getting a specific part of this table? Say that you don't actually want all of the information from this table. You only want, let's say, this one here in our uh, real world data, this this one little um, cell has all the information that we want and we don't want to have to get through everything. Well, to do that, we need to just examine the table a bit more closely and see uh, all of the steps within it. So now we've got the first table here and I've saved it in the table variable. We can actually use find from beautiful soup in the table. So if we look down here, let's say this one, These are this is in uh, a TD tag, which is a uh, cell and then a t within a TR. So I'm going to collapse the stuff we don't need. So we're not interested in the head. We are interested in the body, but not this TR. And we want this one. So we'll collapse these ones here, just so we're not confused. So what we can do is we can go, let's say uh, rows is equal to table.find. And we're going to do find all again. And we're going to put TR. Now, in some cases, perhaps this TR might have an ID. Maybe it would have, or a class, maybe something like uh, whatever it could be, uh, my row. Say if we had this class, we could actually use the class to find it. But in most cases, it wouldn't do. So how can we get this bit? Well, we can do it the same way with indexing. So what we can do is we can find all of the TR, all of the table rows. Now, this is going to return us a nice big long list again. 
Um, it's a bit harder to see a list down here. Um, but what we actually want to do is if we count down, we can see that there is, there's one here, there's one in the head, so we need to remember that. Uh, and then there's two, and this is the third one. So if we do two, and then do rows, sorry, we can see this is where our information is. So we've just accessed this part using indexing. We've just accessed this specific table row. So we're looking within the whole table that we found, finding all the rows, but we're actually only looking for anything that's in the second, well, the third, but the, the second index. Um, so we've got that back. And we can actually go one step further. We can go down deep into the uh, TDs. So we could do, uh, let's do that one, and let's do cell is equal to, and again, instead of table, we want to do rows because we've just isolated down on this row. So we can do rows.find all td and if we see here this would be zero so this one is zero this one will be one so this one will be two and we can again go two and then if we type that out we get that specific cell to get the text we could just do dot text on the end of there and that gets us the text this specific text that's a nice and easy way just to use indexing to first find the table um, by counting how many tables are on the page. Now, if you're looking at a the source code of a website, you can just do Control F to find, and you can scroll down. And if you search for the actual tag, so you could search for a table tag, and you can see how many there are, and you can use then indexing to get the right one. So, if we wanted to get this table, which does have an ID, um, we can use that just to find that specific table. So we could say that this might be. Um, buried somewhere in the HTML and we've just found and we know the ID so we could just do ID table is equal to um, we can do soup.find and we're looking for a table again but we know we have an ID is equal to and it's my table like that and if we call that back we can see that we have this is the table that has um, the ID in it so we can see this data from my table matches this one. So the reason why when we have uh, an identifier or a name that we can use, we want to use find because find will go ahead and just find that specific thing that we've looked for, whereas find all will go out and match everything. So if your table doesn't have or your tag or that you're looking for doesn't have an ID or a class or something, go ahead and use find all and that will return a list for you that you can then index to get that information that you're after. If you do have an ID or something, remember to use find because find all will always return a list for you, uh, even if it's just a list of one item. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you found this one useful, a nice easy way to get to an HTML table or, in, or indeed any HTML tag that doesn't have a class or an ID. Um, it can be useful in, in when, when we're web scraping. Let me know what you thought below in the comments section. Like the video if you like it. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe for more Python and web scraping content coming up. Thank you. Bye.